three, but there's probably gonna be part four and probably part five and maybe even a part six with all this, but it's okay. It's kind of necessary. I don't want these videos to be too long. And acid-base equilibrium is such a huge chunk of the AP exam. So <clears throat> spend a lot of time on it, know it, sleep with it, take a bath in it, whatever you want to do. Make sure you know this stuff. Uh, Lewis acid-base theory is based on um, Gilbert Lewis, the same guy that did electron di diagrams. This guy was obsessed with electrons, I swear. He's just like obsessive, compulsive with electrons. Um, but he came up with the most general and the most recent definition of what is an acid and what is a base using, instead of protons, like Bronsted Lowry, he used those electron pairs that he was so obsessed with. And if you remember in Bronsted Lowry, the acid donated the proton, whereas the base accepted it. With an acid and base in the Lewis theory, the acid is accepting an electron and the base is donating that electron. And the way that you can wreck it, so it's kind of like the exact opposite definition of Bronsted-Lowry. Instead of focusing on protons, um, Lewis, of course, focused on electrons. And <clears throat> the way that you can tell if a compound is going to be a Lewis acid or a Lewis base is, of course, you have to draw the Lewis structure. So here we have an example of um, bromine or boron trifluoride plus ammonia yields whatever the heck this is called. I don't even know. Uh, and we want to know which of these guys is acting as the Lewis acid and which one is acting as the Lewis base. Well, again, you're going to get, just like the conjugate acid, conjugate base um, question, or I can't remember what the other one was that I said, you are going to get a multiple choice question about this, asking you in some way to identify you know, which one of these is the Lewis acid or which one of these is the Lewis base or, you know, all of these can act as the Lewis acid except. And so, A, you're going to have to get really good about drawing Lewis structures. Um, and B, the easiest way to recognize this is um, Lewis bases almost always have a lone pair on their Lewis structure. So if you're going through and drawing all the Lewis structures for your answer choices and you get to that all of them have a lone pair except for one, chances are that one is going to be your answer, whatever the question is that it was being asked. So to draw the Lewis structures for these guys, uh, hopefully you remember that boron is one of the Lewis structure exceptions where it only needs three bonds. And so it's going to look like that. If you need help drawing Lewis structures, I have a couple of videos that you can watch. So that's just what I'm drawing here. And uh, drawing the lines for the electron pairs on the um, outer elements is totally acceptable. They accept it on the AP exam, and it's a lot faster than drawing dots. And it's a lot less likely to be mistaken for something, you know. So do the lines. It's faster. Anything that saves you time on the AP exam is good. Uh, and then we have ammonia here, and so ammonia looks like this, uh, with the lone pair on the uh, nitrogen. And so which one acts as the acid and which one acts as the base? Well, I told you that the base has a lone pair, so guess what ammonia is? It's a Lewis base. Yay! You're all so smart. And then the boron trifluoride. Uh, it does not have a lone pair on the central atom, and in fact, it only has three bonds. So it could quite easily hang on to another pair of electrons, so it is going to be the Lewis acid, or the electron pair acceptor. And then this guy just kind of puts these two together. Basically, this lone pair now gets shared between the two of them. <clears throat> so, moving away from our acid-base theory and getting into pH scale, you guys probably learned this formula back when you took geometry, so I know that this is nothing new. Um, but this might be. Uh, the pH scale actually only definitely works for pH ranges from 2 to 12. Anything below 2 and anything above 12, it's just an approximate pH. Uh, and the reason for that is because once you get below a pH of 2 or above a pH of 12, you're getting into such huge hydrogen ion concentrations or hydroxide ion concentrations that it just it starts to kind of I guess 
it just it gets outside the window of definite answers here but it is an accepted approximation so when we say that hydrochloric acid has a pH of like 0.4 something then yeah that means it's really really acidic and it no it might not be exactly 0.4 but when you're that acidic does it really matter it's just a really good indicator that you are very very acidic um, and a neat little trick to be able to estimate this stuff is that the pH and the exponent on the hydrogen ion concentration are pretty similar. So like let's say you had a hydrogen ion concentration, oh that's a messed up looking bracket, of, I'm just picking numbers out of thin air here, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 5. Well this exponent right here will help you approximate the pH. And so we know that if we were to plug this concentration into negative log, because log is a power of 10 kind of calculation, we will know that the pH is gonna be kinda close to five. This number tells us how close to five. So this number, the closer it gets to one, the closer to five we are. It's always gonna be less than five or less than whatever your exponent is. But if we had say 9.8 times 10 to the negative five, then our pH is gonna be less than five, but greater than four. And because 9.8 is very close to 10, it's probably gonna be around a pH of 4.1-ish, 4.0-ish. Uh, but it is an approximation of your pH, so it can kind of help you maybe save some time on the multiple choice section because you don't get the calculator there anyways. Uh, and this is like my favorite square ever. It's awesome. You can call this the pH baseball diamond if you want. Um, and in order to advance from base to base, there are certain things that you have to do. Uh, and it's just kind of a little helpful, you know, trick to... I would definitely write this down somewhere, keep track of it. And these are, like this says 10 to the raised to the negative pH power. And down here, this is 10 raised to the negative pOH power. And both of these are Kw, which is one uh, times 10 to the negative 14. So that's what these two guys are here. Um, and the rest of that should be pretty straightforward. <clears throat> So a strong acid base, like I said before, does not get an equilibrium equation at all because the whole thing ionizes. And so if you are calculating uh, the pH of a strong acid or base, you can use the original acid or base concentration, I should put slash base, <coughs> to find the pH or you know maybe the pOH depending on what it is that you're trying to do. So I've got a couple of examples here to show you what I'm talking about. So calculate the hydroxide ion, or sorry, hydrogen ion concentration in pH in a solution of 0.37 molar hydrochloric acid. Well, when you have hydrochloric acid dissolved in water, it's not an equilibrium situation with a bidirectional arrow, it's a unidirectional arrow in that it completely ionizes into hydrogen ion and chlorine ion. And so what that means is that whatever concentration, whoops, you started out with of your hydrochloric acid, the whole thing gets converted into, or gets ionized into hydrogen and chlorine. And since this is a one-to-one -one ratio, we know if we have 0.37 molar HCl, well, we're gonna have 0.37 molar hydrogen ion concentration. And so that means calculate the hydrogen ion. Well, we didn't really have to calculate anything because it's the same. And then the pH is gonna be negative log of that 0.37 and plug that into your trusty little calculator and you get 0.43 as your pH and again this is an approximation because it's less than two but it just means that it's really really acidic and that's okay now on this one the sodium hydroxide it's a strong base and so when you put it into water, it's going to completely ionize into the neutral sodium ion and the hydroxide ion. Oh, by the way, the chlorine ion, because it is the anion of an acid, of a strong acid, it is a neutral anion. <clears throat> okay, so coming back here, uh, the molarity of this solution of NaOH was 0.58 molar. Well, because this is a strong base, the whole thing is going to ionize and you're going to end up with 0.58 molar of the neutral sodium ion and 
0.58 molar of the hydroxide ion. So that is here. So this is 0.58 molar. Now to calculate the pH of this guy, we can't just take the negative log of 0.58 because what the negative log of 0.58, well this is the OH, and so this is going to equal the pOH. So I do need that information to be able to solve this, and this works out to 0.24. And then to find the pH, you just simply take 14 minus that 0.24, uh, and you end up with 13.76. And so that is the pH of the solution, pOH, pH. And I think I am going to go ahead and call part three Dunsies and start on a part four for you guys.